in April, a handful of unexplained explosions in the small Eastern European nation of Moldova sparked concern that that country might be under attack from Russia. Why? Well, Moldova, which is nestled on Ukraine's southwest border, has many similarities with its larger neighbor. Most importantly, it is on a swift march toward democratization and westernization. In fact, in late June, it was granted EU candidate status alongside Ukraine. But Moldova also has a Russian-backed breakaway region called Transnistria, where 30 years ago, Moldovan forces fought Russian troops. Today, Russian troops are still based there. I wanted to know how it felt to be caught between Russia and the West. And I had an opportunity to talk to Moldova's Prime Minister, Natalia Gavrulitsa. Madam Prime Minister, pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Tell us about Moldova. Moldova is another country, it seems to me, like Ukraine, that uh, once part of the Russian Empire, once part of the Soviet Empire, really wants to become a, a Western liberal democracy. Indeed, um, uh, Moldova has had a troubled history in a complicated region, uh, and it has not only been uh, part of the Soviet Union, it has also been part of Romania um, uh, between uh, the First and the Second World War. The majority of the population is Romanian-speaking, uh, but we also have uh, Ukrainian, Russian, Bulgarian, and uh, Gagauz, uh, which is a Turkish-speaking minority. Um, and in the last elections, the people have voted massively uh, for a uh, pro-European majority for going the course of democratic institutions, fighting corruption, ensuring the respect for human rights, and um, striving towards the European integration course. So um, achieving candidate status uh, for EU integration has been um, a significant victory for Moldova, one that the people have waited for for a long time. But uh, it is very unfortunate that it happens in such a complicated context in the region and uh, such horrible times for Ukraine. Tell us what it's been like to be dealing with this Russian invasion of Ukraine, because you are right there, as mm -hmm. you say, and I think half a million Ukrainians have passed through your country. Uh, describe what, you know, what's going on. Indeed, um, you know, as many people around the world, we were surprised uh, on the 24th of February when Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, and we had to deal very quickly with a massive uh, refugee flow. And of course, uh, there were some contingency preparations and um, there were some plans. Uh, but of course, uh, we did not consider the probability to be very high. The entire society mobilized in an exemplary way. Uh, and Moldova uh, not only uh, helped half a million refugees uh, move through Moldova, uh, but also at some point was hosting uh, the highest number per capita of any country. How worried are you that the Russians will move next into uh, Moldova? We are worried. Of course, this is a risk. It's a hypothetical scenario for now. Uh, but uh, if uh, the military actions uh, move further uh, into the southwestern part of Ukraine and towards Odessa, then, of course, we are very worried, uh, especially considering that uh, troops on the territory of the secessionist Transnistrian region. We are doing everything possible to maintain peace and stability and to ensure that uh, the fighting does not escalate. For you, um, when you look at the, the situation in Ukraine, uh, explain the stakes. If Russia were able to get away with this aggression um, and keep the territories it has conquered since February 24th, what, what kind of a position does the, this put you in? This is uh, a very difficult position, not just for Moldova, but for any small country, any country um, in, that relies on the rule, rules-based international order. If a country can uh, start an annexation war um, without any regard for uh, you know, international law, then in this sense, nobody is safe. Uh, uh, and I think that a lot of uh, uh, countries are worried. 
you're paying a pretty heavy price um, economically. Um, are you? Do you think you'll be able to continue to to hold? You know, to do what you have to do, um, even if the price goes higher, gets higher. Indeed, Moldova is the most affected country after Ukraine uh, economically uh, from this war. We saw already uh, very high inflation. Uh, the inflation in June was at 32 percent. We continue to see a rise in energy prices. Uh, it has gone up sixfold since uh, the government assumed office a year ago. And uh, just to give uh, people perspective, uh, the average consumption of uh, family in Europe uh, of uh, energy is about 5% of its income. Uh, in Moldova, before the crisis, it was 15%. Now, if the price goes sixfold, then actually this is above uh, any reasonable affordability level. But we really hope that our society and our people uh, are resilient uh, enough to fare through this very, very difficult time. Um, but we have seen, for example, in polls that even after receiving a very large number of refugees, 85 percent of Moldovans say that they would receive more refugees, and 50 percent say unconditionally for whatever time. So this makes me very optimistic about uh, the wisdom of my people. Madam Prime Minister, pleasure to have you on. Thank you.